Moody Blues and also the promoter Harvey Goldsmith. I'd like to ask a question that applies to all three of you, and all three of you will have an opinion, especially, uh, first of all, let me ask the Moody Blues um, part of the, the trio here. Why have the Moody Blues endured so long so successfully? Patrick, why do you think it is? Uh, because uh, their music first was a, a very strong trademark. You know, it has marked several generations of people. I'm sure yourself. Uh, oh yes, I mean I was fanatical uh, about Moody Blues music in the late 60s. Has been influenced as well. They've they've done a, a very strong um, combination of mixture of uh, rock, pop, and classical music at the time, blending all the elements into kind of very universal um, stereotypes, lyrically speaking and musically speaking. The melodies are simple, the chords are simple, the lyrics are simple, and it's all based around peace and love still, you know. And quality. And, and, and very good quality, and I think this is uh, it's a winning formula, you know. John, I mean, why, why do you release singles? Because do, do singles do you that much good? Because I think of you as an album group, essentially. Well, the Moody Blues are an album band, and... Uh, We've never actually released a single as a single. Uh, the record company usually take a track off an album. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, if it's a hit, that's a, real, that's a bonus for Is the Is it band. ever likely to be? Uh, a hit? Uh, yeah, as, as singles go, you know, big uh, single hit. Uh, well, I love, I love the record, so I don't yeah. know. Um, when we started with Days of Future Past, what we wanted to do was to have the opportunity to use 40 minutes of music on an album. Uh, to represent the Moody Blues of what they were doing at that time, mm -hmm. and instead of sort of two and a half minutes on a single. And uh, we've sort of kept to that standard uh, from, uh, from 1966. And sold something like 38 million records. Oh, I think it's gone up a bit more. It's gone up a bit, Yes, well, this, this was gone, yesterday's This figure, was yeah. yesterday. Mm -hmm. No, I think it's just gone 50 million. 50? Out. Yes. Oh, I was only 12 million out. 12 million. I'm sorry about that. Good, Harvey, good sales day yesterday. <laughs> yes. yeah. Harvey, from a, from a different standpoint, but very much in the same business, what is it the Moody Blues have that, I mean, it's, it's obvious mm -hmm. talent, but uh, there's a lot of talent about, but talent doesn't always last more than, say, 10 years in this business. I, I think it's, uh, they were very innovative of their time. And I think also, if you look at the top 20 acts in the world, you'll find they all have the same formula in terms of work pattern, which is very important and different from today's singles type acts is that those acts that broke live around the world kept their audience and they're not dependent totally on whether they have a hit single or not. And promotion. And so not it only totally goes on up. There's always hype. a baseline. Mm -hmm. And because their music was so good and different and they've kept up that standard, the baseline is always there and they just grow on it each time they bring a record out. Because yeah. you were th with them fairly early on, weren't you? Yes. 1966. <laughs> <laughs> Very early. Just after it's go just now. Just 20 isn't? years ago. Don't worry about it. Yes. Yes. Well, we, yes. yes. well we'll have to go I've got now. Got the scars to prove it. <laughs> scar. we take a bro break back in a moment. <laughs> John and Patrick and the promoter Harvey Goldsmith, and you are promoting rather, <coughs> excuse me, rather a lot this summer, aren't you? Yes, we're we're very busy. Um, we've just announced an extra show with Queen at the end of their tour at Nebworth on in August the 9th. Mm. Um, and we've already sold out two shows at Wembley Stadium, which is pretty fantastic. And uh, this morning we've just announced um, a special show with uh, Eric Clapton and uh, with young Phil Collins playing drums behind him up in the NEC in Birmingham, July the 14th. And um, we have something rather special on in August the 6th at Wembley Arena, which is a a bit of a dream of mine which has come true. We're presenting Pavarotti and the Royal Philharmonic Orchestra, which is what prompts you to do that. change, I think. Mm. Yeah. I think that uh, classical stars are the same as pop stars, you know, mm. they, they want an audience and I think they're totally stifled in the places that they've been allowed to play in up to now. And I've had this dream that I've been working on and will continue next year of once a year presenting the best of opera, ballet, and orchestral piece in a huge surrounding mm -hmm. and something completely different. And uh, we started talking around the business and the, the, the main difference between classical music and pop music is they're working, you know, light years ahead. I mean, you're booking 1990. And um, when we talked with Pavarotti's people, he said, absolutely, I love the idea. And um, that's going to happen 
in August at Wembley. With Anything the for the Moody Blues? Or are they too far away at the moment, aren't they? In the well, States? They're, no. they're out. Yeah. I think they're going to be out for six months. Aren't yes. Yeah. The well, we, of October. well, I hope you have a great trip. It's been great to see you today. Thanks very much for coming in. Thank you very much. And, um, you. you know, sort of take care in the States with those jets. Mother, the minder will look after you, won't you? Yes, take yeah. care of everything. Thanks <laughs> a lot, anyway. And thank you, Harvey, for being thank with you. us thank this you. morning. We'll take a break.